Fox 46 Good Day Charlotte starts right now. Starting the new year off with a bang doesn't mean you have to start 2022 with COVID. Health experts are urging people to take precautions at any and all celebrations coming up tomorrow night. We're joined this morning now by integrative pediatrician Dr. Anna Maria Temple, one of our favorites here on Good Day. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I am doing fantastic. My question, I'm flipping it back on you is how are you and your family? Listen, I'm just gonna be honest here. We were gonna do a completely other topic uh, heading into 2022 when I found out here over the last couple of days, your entire family, like at least 90% of them, you guys have COVID. We came down with COVID like four days before Christmas. You know, we had, my husband and I had gone to Vegas and uh, we came back and we were just not feeling well. So we yeah. just did a test to be responsible. And lo and behold, there was positive as our kids were coming home from college and my kids were like, why are we here? <laughs> What's going to yeah. happen now? Um, yeah, so all, yeah, so four of us tested positive out of five, two of us had symptoms and two the two children had nothing. This is really unbelievable. So we thought this is the perfect conversation to have because what you're going through is your family. Every family is going through that right now. The numbers are off the charts and people are worried. And now we got New Year's Eve coming up uh, in, in a day. And so I, my question for you is when you have multiple family members or even if it's just one person in a household, did you guys quarantine? How do you recommend quarantining with a family? <sighs> You know, I know this is going to be against the, you know, what the teaching is from the CDC. I don't recommend quarantining. Here's why. You know, the worst thing that you can do to somebody in prison is to put them in solitary confinement. And for this illness, what we're doing is trying to put them in solitary confinement. Good luck putting a seven-year-old in their own room for 10 days. That's never going to happen. It is, I find it detrimental to the psyche, to the stress, to the nervous system. When we're on well, we should be able to go outside. We should be able to see sunshine and we need the love of our family and support we're going to get it anyway in my families and clinics in the clinic when they try to isolate themselves what ended up happening everyone ended up getting it anyway it just was like eight weeks of quarantine so i'm like well you know it's going to be in the house we know we're all going to get it especially with omicron which is highly infectious might as well let's get it over with if you're not highly at risk. Always talk to your doctor. But this is my advice that I give to my patients in my practice. All right. I'm curious because this is not your first rodeo with COVID. Can you get reinfected? Yes, you can. And that's been well established in the medical literature. Initially, when COVID was running through in the 2020, beginning of 2021, it didn't look like there was a lot of reinfections. It was actually very rare, according to the medical journals. However, now that we have Omicron, we have documented in South Africa, in Qatar, in the UK, and in the US that, yes, you can get COVID again. And for majority of people, the second go round looks to be a lot milder than the first go around. I think one of the biggest questions, Dr. Temple, is uh, if you are vaccinated, can you still get and spread COVID? <sighs> Yeah, you know, that's a hot topic on the table, right? So if we're getting the point of the vaccinations is to decrease hospitalizations and decrease the rates of death. It does decrease the rate of transmission and the rate of you getting it, but it's not zero. So people that have are vaccinated can still get COVID. Generally, they're going to have milder symptoms and they can still spread it. Now, there's also, of course, uh, you know, rumors going on like, oh, if you have vaccines, you're never going to die. You're not going to be in the hospital. That's not true either. It just so the vaccines decrease your risk of hospitalization, decrease the chances of dying. Okay, well, the word over the last month or two has been Omicron. Omicron, Omicron, Omicron. It's a million different ways to pronounce it. It's the same thing. Why is this, uh, why is it moving at such a quick pace right now? Well, you know, the goal of every virus is to become the common cold. When the virus is, uh, doesn't spread very well and it kills the host too quickly, that's a terrible virus, like Ebola, terrible. Kills the host 90%. It doesn't spread. So the virus wants to be super infectious and have milder symptoms. And that way, it propagates itself through the population and it could live a long, healthy life for the virus. So Omicron, what's happened is that it's a new variation. It is much more infectious. It's looking to be less intense than uh, Delta. The studies are still out. It's still new. So this is just preliminary stuff. But it is much more infectious. And so it's spreading like wildfire right now.
Okay, so if you do get it uh, and you have to be at home or quarantined in isolation for a while, what are some things? I know there's a lot of non-FDA approved things, hydrochloroquine and some monoclonal antibodies treatments that are out there. What did you and your family do? What do you recommend to those that, that do have it to help minimize some of the symptoms? Yeah, you know, so um, what everyone has asked me, like, do we do any of those things? We did not do ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine or monoclonal antibodies. What we did is we focused on our symptoms when we worked on our plant points, as you guys always hear me talk about. So we laid lots of fruits and vegetables. For our aches and pains, we did Epsom salt baths. So I did a really warm, we're adults. For the adults, I did them really hot. The magnesium in Epsom salt bath actually helps decrease the muscle aches and the tension and the chill which were really intense for both John and I. For sore throat, we use a throat spray with honey in it. You don't want to use it in kids under the age of one, but it's an amazing throat reliever. I can't tell you how many people love this. And ready, you guys, so they're the first to see this. No one has seen this yet, but we have our own supplements coming out in 2022. So we use vitamin D, which is important for our immune system, liposomal vitamin C, important to have in liposomal format, which means it's in fat, better absorption. We have quercetin, which is a powerful antioxidant that has been yeah. shown to help decrease the symptoms of viral illness. And of course, we use SPI defense, which is basically a boost to the immune systems, like extra antibodies, if you will, to help get her over this illness quicker. Lastly, I was going to show you elderberry syrup we drank it all. <laughs> it's all gone. Well, listen, sounds like you're on the back end of what the CDC is recommending, you know, five to 10 days. So I wish you and your family well. Thank you for getting us, navigating us through what's been going on with your family. I wish you well and a very happy new year. And I can't wait to talk next year about what we need to plan to live a healthier and a longer uh, for 2022. Dr. Anna Maria Temple, thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year's to everybody. All right. Take care.